Hello. With Autodesk announcing that they're killing off EagleCAD, I thought I'd make a quick video on importing Eagle projects into KiteCAD. For this example, I'm going to be grabbing the files for Adafruit's MicroPad. This is a 12 mechanical key keypad with hot swap sockets running an RP2040 chip with an encoder to change layers and an OLED screen. First, we need to go over to their GitHub. Here you can see the Eagle CAD board files and the schematic. Once they're saved, we can go into KiCAD and select File, Import, Non KiCAD Project, and pick Eagle. We then navigate to where we saved the files. Click on the board file, and KiCAD will ask us to set up a destination folder for the new project. And the import will start. We'll be greeted with this layer map window. As you can see here on the left are the layers for the Eagle format and on the right the KiCAD layers. The first thing we're going to do is hit the auto match layers button. This will do 90% of the work for us but there are some quirks like the milling layer. If the PCB has any cutouts we're going to need to pair that up with the edge cut layers for KiCAD. Another thing to look out for is image files. Almost all Adafruit boards have custom silk screens that are saved as bitmaps. So we need to select them and put them into one of the silk screen layers for KiCAD. Front or back's fine as we'll be able to flip them later. Then we just press OK. You may get a pop-up, but these are very handy. In this case, I believe it's just telling me that this is a restricted zone for the top copper, so it can't route a trace through where it's not wanted. As this board is already routed, it's not an issue. As the board is now imported, you can give it a quick visual inspection and hit the B key to fill your copper pores in. Now we go to View, 3D View, and you can see here where we map the route layers to the edge cut, we have all the cutouts for the LEDs in this case. And we see the screen prints tied to the components along with the bitmap front and back that we added. We're going to want to get rid of all the unwanted screen printing. Now people new to KiCAD may be inclined to hit the update PCB from schematic button. Don't do that. Instead we're going to go to tools, update schematic from PCB. Nine times out of ten, it will say it can't find it, but clicking OK brings up this window. The important box here is the relink footprint option. Here we don't need values or footprint assignments as we'll be removing them anyway, but you may want to keep those options ticked in your project. Play about. We also have these three errors for silkscreen items that don't have a symbol on the schematic. Not an issue as we can add them at any point. Now we should find a schematic for the project available. We can click into it and see the NeoPixels, the mechanical keys, the OLED, and can navigate to the other sheet for components like the RP2040 if you wanted to reassign pins at some point. Now to show the schematic and PCB are linked, I'm going to edit the PCB through the schematic. In this case, I'm going to remove two NeoPixel LEDs and two keys to make a small 3U spacebar at the bottom of the pad. I'm going to hop into schematic. Remove the two bottom LEDs in the chain and link back up the middle one. Then remove the two extra keys so we can add stabilizers for our mini spacebar. Now we can hit the update PCB from schematic button. 
Make sure Relink is not selected this time. And for this, we want to tick Delete Footprints without a symbol and update the PCB. After hitting the B key again to repo our copper, we can see that the keys and LED along with the cutouts have gone. We're left with all these tracks that are not needed, so I'm just going to remove them, speed this up and rip up these tracks. Now we have a single key at the bottom, we need to add the stabilizer. So I'm just going to select add footprint and find a 3U stabilizer for a Cherry MX switch. I can place this off to the side as we need it centered to the key. We can press the S key and click on the center of the footprint to align the grid to the footprint. Then just grab the stabilizer and move it till it snaps into place. Now we can check that in the 3D view. So the stabilizer is there, but it's the wrong side of the PCB. So we just select the footprint and press F for flip to change sides. And now it's the right way round. You may notice that the custom silk screen are gone as they didn't have a footprint on the schematic. But we can easily add them back by clicking on add footprint and looking in the project files at the top. Now we're just going to use the S key again and click on the corner of the PCB to align the grid. And we could snap the silk screen into place. This is the bottom silk so we need to flip it with the F key and snap it in. The same with the top silk screen. Now we have imported and edited a project, we could generate the fabrication files and send our Gerbers off. But I want to tweak the ball graphics and add some 3D models so I can have the option to export it as a step file and jump into CAD and make an enclosure for the pad. I'm not going to make you watch all of that so I'm going to hit fast forward. And here at the end we have gone through and taken an Eagle project into KiCad, got to the point of making production files, and I've just gone a little further with some 3D models to show what's possible for someone new like myself. I'm going to add a link to the KiCad forum below, as they are some of the most helpful people I've ever met, with a huge tolerance for noobs like me. I hope you have found this helpful and I've encouraged you to try KiCad. Thank you.